everyone, my name is Connie Lawhead. I'm also known as the Trap Queen. Today we're going to talk a little bit about condensate traps. What are the challenges with standard P-traps? What are some better solutions out there to replace the standard P-trap? So first of all, let's talk about the standard P-trap. Why was that the solution that was given for condensation with HVAC equipment? Well, it goes back 150 years. The standard P-trap is the same trap that is used on your kitchen sink, your bathroom sink, and 150 years ago, that was the only solution. So when it came time to how do we get rid of condensation in our HVAC equipment, it was the natural solution. But you and I both know that for a standard P-trap to function properly, it has to maintain water in the line to maintain the seal. Now, in a kitchen sink, a bathroom sink, that's easy to do. But in an HVAC system, you don't always have condensate flowing to maintain the seal. So that creates challenges. So that's number one. Number two, how many times have you run into a situation where you don't have enough space, enough height available to install a standard P-trap? What do you do? How do you solve that problem? Number three, how many times do you have to go because you've got a uh, clogged line because of sludge, crud, and mold that has grown in a standard P-trap? And then the blowback. There's also one thing that no one ever talks about is the energy cost due to lost energy in a standard P-trap. And that's when the standard P-trap fails. And what is the best solution out there? Or what is another solution out there? So <clears throat> as far as height is concerned, for a negative pressure system, the standard P-trap formula is you take the static pressure of the system times two plus one to get you your height. So let's just say for this instance, you have a two inch static pressure. That means you need a four to five inch drop for a standard P-trap. Now the solution we're gonna talk about today is called the air trap. Why is it called the air trap? The air trap uses the air pressure of the equipment to maintain the seal. So the other benefit of this is the air trap does not require quite the height that a, con a standard P-trap requires. What the air trap requires is that same static pressure and an inch for safety factor. And why do you want to do an inch for a safety factor? That's for your dirty filters, your dirty coils, something that's going to increase the static pressure of the equipment. So number one, now you've solved the problem and you don't have to um, put holes in roofs. You don't have to jackhammer mechanical rooms to give you enough height. Now you can see from the image on the screen the difference in space required versus a standard P-trap and an HVAC air trap. Frozen broken traps. So how does that happen? Well, typically it's because a standard P-trap has maintained water in the line um, and it's most commonly happens during the change of season, whether it's the fall when all of a sudden you go from warm weather to cold weather and there's still some water in the line. And so typically what you need to do at the end of the cooling season is flush the line. In the springtime, what happens is the line is dry and for the trap to function properly, it has to have water in it. Now, many times homeowners, facilities, whatnot, they have their HVAC equipment set to auto, which means it flips from heating to cooling. So once cooling kicks in, the, the condensate will start flowing. The problem is you could have an 80 degree day or a 70 degree day, which is going to kick on the air conditioning, which means you're going to have water in the line. And then that night it goes down below freezing. And that's when a lot of the frozen broken traps happen. So What's the difference between a standard P-trap and an air trap is the air trap only has water when condensate is flowing. Once condensation stops, the trap is dry. 